increasing and decreasing functions. What are they and why do we care? Stick around to find out. Okay, let's sketch a quick function here, some random cubic. It doesn't matter the specifics about the function, uh, but let's say it uh, cuts the x-axis around negative two or something, and it'll look something like this. Good enough. Okay, uh, we can say this function is increasing up to this point here. And also we'll be looking at this interval between those two points. So we can say a function is increasing when uh, we're looking at as x increases, as x increases from left to right, uh, the value of f of x is increasing also. So for any value, let's say we look at the value of f of x here at, um, I don't know, negative four, and then we look at the value of f of x again at negative two, uh, we can see that the, the value of f of x here is greater than at x when x is negative four, okay? So it's higher up on the y-axis. All right, so all the way up to this point here, we can say the function is increasing, all right, for that section there. And in between those two turning points, let's have a look at that section, we can say that the function is decreasing because as x increases, the value of f of x is decreasing. So let's say we look at this point here, um, whatever that is, x is a half, and then we look here at x equals two, uh, the value of f of x at two, x equals two is less than up here. All right, so for that orange section, the, the function is decreasing. Then the final section here, uh, after that turning point, let's have a look at that. Well, have a guess. Can you tell me what you think would be happening here? Yes, the function is increasing again. Um, so for the yellow section, f of x is increasing. For the yellow and the pink sections, and the orange section, f of x is decreasing. Okay, so when can we determine, or how can we determine if a function is increasing or decreasing? Uh, well, we can do that. One way to do that is using the derivative of the function, um, which we've learned about in previous videos. And we know this is the tangent at a point on the function. So let's say we took a tangent here, um, at whatever that is. So the gradient of that tangent is positive, right? Then let's say we took a tangent down here. Uh, let's use a different color. Let's say we took a tangent down here. That, the gradient of that tangent is negative. Uh, so we can use the derivative f dash of x um, at a point on the function you know, in between those intervals to say whether the function's increasing or decreasing. So that's pretty much it. It's pretty straightforward. It's not meant to be complicated, uh, but it is uh, uh, an important thing to learn. Um, and if you want to define that more carefully, you can say the function f of x is increasing on the interval a, b, if f dash of x is greater than zero for all values of x such that x is between a and b. So essentially what I just said there um, and an important note about these square brackets, remember that means including a and b. Um, uh, and we'll look at you know, how to use these inequality symbols as we go through some examples. And then a function f of x is decreasing on the interval a to b if f dash of x is less than zero. So we get a negative gradient for that tangent for all values of x such that x is between a and b. So why do we care about increasing and decreasing functions? Well, we might have a function that we don't know what it looks like, we're not sure how it behaves, and we can find out where it's increasing and decreasing using calculus to figure out what it looks like. And that can be useful to find out more information about that function uh, that we might not get in another way. Uh, now, some of you, curi the curious minded of you might be wondering, well, what if we have uh, a function where we have a flat point, where we have you know, something like this. So it's not increasing or decreasing in this interval, it's just flat. Uh, well, for this function, we would still say it's increasing because notice here we said f dash of x is greater than or equal to zero. Uh, so in this section, f, the, the gradient function is equal to zero. 
So for all values of x, f dash of x is greater than or equal to zero. And this gets to a slightly subtle point where we have a difference between increasing functions, increasing functions versus strictly, strictly increasing functions. So this would not be a strictly increasing function because we have that period, uh, that interval there where the, the, the derivative is equal to zero. Um, so this would just be an increasing function. But this isn't really that important. Uh, it's just a small uh, subtle detail that you don't really have to worry about uh, in A-level mathematics. Okay, so let's have a look at some examples. Example one here says, find the values of x for which f of x is an increasing function given that f of x equals 3x squared plus 8x plus 2. The first step with these questions is to find the derivative. So we're going to go ahead and find f dash of x using the skills we've learned in previous videos in this series. Uh, so for this function, we can use the addition rule so we can derive each term separately and we can use the power rule on each term. The power rule says we multiply the coefficient by the exponent, so 3 times 2 is 6, and then we subtract 1 from the exponent, so this will be x to the power 1. Next, 8x, we multiply the coefficient by 1, which is the power of x, so that's just 8, and then subtract 1 from the power, 1 take 1 is 0, so x to the power 0 is 1, so that term will just be 8, and then when we derive a constant that is always 0. So we have our derivative here, 6x plus 8, the next step is to say if f dash of x, f dash of x is greater than or equal to zero, then 6x plus 8 is greater than or equal to zero, because that's the derivative. We're saying greater than or equal to because we're looking for where the function is increasing. Okay, next we go ahead and solve this inequality. So subtract 8 from both sides. This will be 6x greater than or equal to negative 8, then divide by 6. And then we could also go ahead and divide by 2 as well. So x is going to be greater than or equal to negative 4 on 3. And then we can go ahead and finish the problem off by stating that f of x is increasing, is increasing on the interval, on the interval x greater than or equal to negative 4 on 3. Uh, now if you want a picture of what this would look like, this is a quadratic, it's a positive quadratic. Um, and while we don't exactly know what it looks like, but this, what this actually tells you is the uh, vertex of the quadratic. So we know the turning point is at negative uh, four and three. So, you know, something like this. Um, and what this means for the, the function to be increasing in this interval, it means the turning point is here at negative four and three. And this whole section here after the turning point is where the function is increasing. This function up to negative four and three is where the function is decreasing. All right, on to the next example. Example two says, find the values of x for which f of x is a decreasing function given that f of x equals x to the power four take x, eight x cubed. Okay, again, we want the derivative. That's our first step. So again, we can use the power rule on each term. Multiply the coefficient by 4 for the first term, 4x. Subtract 1 from the power, 4x to the power 3. Next, multiply the coefficient by 3 for the second term. 8 times 3 is 24. Subtract 1 from the power. 3 take 1 is 2, so that's negative 24x squared. Next, we say if, if f dash of x uh, is less than or equal to zero, because we're looking for it's decreasing, then 4x cubed take 24x squared is less than or equal to zero. For this inequality, we can first factorize uh, this expression here. We can factorize a 4x squared. Let's go ahead and do that first. Um, so this will be left with x here in the first term, then 24x squared divided by 4x squared that just leaves us with six. Okay, so then we get four x squared multiplied by x takes six is less than or equal to zero. Here you need to zoom out and uh, look at this expression and ask yourself, well, which parts of this expression are always positive? Uh, because when we have x squared, it, as long as x is a real number, this will always be positive. So we can just say 
when is x take 6 less than or equal to 0? And that's when x is less than or equal to 6, just adding 6 to both sides. Um, so then we can finish it off by saying, therefore, f of x is decreasing, decreasing on the interval, on the interval x less than or equal to 6. Um, and if we want a picture of what this would look like, it's a bit hard because this is a quartic. Um, now, we did do sketching quartics at the start of the, the first year of A-levels. Um, but uh, I'm not going to spend too much time worrying exactly what this would look like. However, we do know that the function is decreasing for all values of x less than 6. So let's say x is x equal to 6 is over here. I don't know, let's say there's just a turning point there. Maybe it looks something like this. So something like this. And the reason I went through 0 there is because we know 0, 0 would be a solution on this quartic. So I at least know these two points. So you can see if we look at the whole section of this graph, less than 6 on the x-axis, f of x is decreasing. So it might look something like that. Okay, on to the final question we're doing this video. This is uh, an exam question from the 2023 papers. Example of what you might have to do in an exam. This question says a curve has equation y equals 2 thirds x cubed take 7 on 2 x squared take 4x plus 5. Find dy and dx, writing your answer in simplest form. And then part B says, hence find the range of values of x for which y is decreasing. All right, so they've scaffolded this for us already. They've told us the first step is to find dy and dx, which is the same as what we're doing. Well, we're calling it f dash of x. Again, I mentioned that in a previous video. They're the same thing. They're just different terms for the derivative. Um, so we're going to uh, derive this. Again, we can use the addition rule, drive each term separately using the power rule. So multiply the coefficient by the power. 2 thirds times 3 is just 2. Then subtract 1 from the power. So that's 2x squared. Multiply for the second term, multiply 7 on 2 by 2. That's just 7. And then subtract 1 from the power. So that will be negative 7x. The third term, negative 4x, is just negative 4. And the last term is a constant, which is always 0. So we have dy on dx. Then we can say if dy on dx is less than or equal to 0, because we're looking for when it's decreasing, then 2x squared take 7x take 4 is less than or equal to 0. OK, this is a quadratic. Um, and the first thing I would ask myself is, can I factorize this? So are there factors of 4 and 2 that make 7? So I know factors of 4 are either 2 and 2 or 4 and 1. And the only factors of 2 are 2 and 1. So I'm going to put those in first. If I multiply 2 by 4, that would be 8. And then subtract 1, that would be 7. So I can make, I can make 7 with the factors of 4 of 4 and 1. Okay, hopefully you followed that. So then if I make this... 8 and negative, so 2x minus, uh, multiplied by negative 4 is negative 8, and add 1, I'll get a negative 7x, and that will also give me a final term of negative 4. So that's the factorization of that quadratic. Uh, now you need to remember how to solve quadratic inequalities to solve this question, which is another skill we learnt about uh, previously. Uh, this involves asking where the critical values are, critical values of this quadratic, the way I do this is to say, well, this is if this is equal to 0, what are the values for x that make it equal to 0? Um, so in other words, if I have this equation, what are the values of x that make it 0? And hopefully you remember how to do this from solving quadratics. Uh, you set each bracket equal to 0. So if this equals 0, that would give us 2x plus 1 equal to 0. So then x is equal to negative half. And here, if x take 4 is equal to 0, then x equals 4. Now, here, if you find it helpful, you can draw a, a quick sketch of that quadratic. Uh, the, the, it's a positive quadratic, and these critical values means it cuts the x-axis at those values. So it cuts the x-axis at x equals negative half and 4. 
So it would look something like this. Okay, so that's at negative half and four. And we're asking where it's less than zero. Okay, this is the graph of the derivative, not f of x. This is gr the graph of f dash of x. So this is less than zero, in other words, underneath the x-axis between negative a half and four, okay? Um, so, therefore, uh, we can say that x is greater than or equal to negative half and less than or equal to four. Okay, so then to finish off, we can say y is decreasing on the interval on the interval uh, negative half to four. And that was part B for four marks. And uh, that was increasing and decreasing functions. I hope you found that video helpful. Please leave a like if you did, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.